Welcome to Boardroom Broadcasts, speaking with listed companies from around the world. You can stay up to date with all our content by visiting www.boardroombroadcasts.com and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Dr. George Adams, CEO of VenturePoint Diagnostics and scientist, serial entrepreneur, and financier. He has been instrumental in founding over 30 companies who have raised $100 million and has been the director of 10 venture capital funds and 10 startup companies. In 2007, he received the World Economic Foundation Technology Pioneer Award. Dr. Adams has 124 scientific publications and is a reviewer for major scientific journals, federal granting agencies, and centers of excellence. Dr. George Adams, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So, could you give us the overview of VenturePoint? Sure. Uh, VenturePoint is focused on a better way to look at your heart using ultrasound. So it was founded in 2005 in Seattle based on an invention out of the University of Washington, which was a n- new way of artificial intelligence it was a way of analyzing conventional 2D ultrasound of the heart. Uh, we moved the company to Toronto a couple years ago and formed a new team around a, a, a great group of ultrasound experts headed by Desmond Hirzon, who has 30 years experience in, in ultrasound and has brought a number of ultrasound machines to the market. Uh, we then, when the original venture was focused on the right ventricle, the right one chamber of the heart, we've now, uh, with Desmond's team, we have expanded that now to all four chambers of the heart so we can do a whole heart analysis now. Um, and that product was approved by the US FDA last spring to be shown to be equivalent to MRI. So the company's really focused on a very accurate, precise, and rapid and inexpensive way to get information of what's happening of all parts of your heart, not just the left ventricle or the right ventricle. So that's uh, that's our claim to fame. Okay, very good. Um, and so, what are the the challenges that that you're facing at the moment before you can you know continue to see successive growth moving forward? Well, we're in full commercialization mode now, so we have a marketing team. So the challenge is to build awareness within the cardiology community that it is now possible to get the information on all four chambers of the heart. Uh, every kind of heart condition uh, is sort of focused. You can die from right heart failure. You can die from left heart failure. You can die from atrial fibrillation of the left atrium. You can die from atrial fibrillation of the right atrium. So basically, it's a serial pump four-chamber serial pump, and if any one of the chambers fails, then the whole pump fails. So um, they have not been able to get all the information about the heart easily. The only way to get that information is to put you in MRI for an hour and a half to two hours and then spend another hour or more analyzing the MRI. And that's both inconvenient, super expensive, and so they don't do it. So they have, you know, we really have the, the challenge now is to is to go to the conferences and go to the to the various uh, and go direct to the sales force uh, to tell the doctors it's quite possible it's possible to get all this information and you can actually figure out what's wrong with all all the different parts of the heart and in complex heart diseases you can have problems with the left side problems with the right side you can have multiple problems and so um, this information should help them or will absolutely will help them uh, diagnose and monitor their patients. Uh, we have over two dozen scientific publications by major cardiology groups showing that we are equivalent to MRI and that the information is accurate. So it's really just a case of getting the word out. Okay, great. Um, and so can you explain a, a little bit more for people that aren't uh, entrenched in the industry about this breakthrough artificial intelligence technology? Well, we call it knowledge-based reconstruction, and it's uh, it's a very uh, it's patented technology, and we basically are able to take very sparse data, very small points uh, on the different views. So a standard 2D ultrasound examination of the heart would have 16 different slices or views that you would take through the heart at all different angles. And so you get a little piece of a heart in each one of these views, and it's really the artificial intelligence is taking a little bit of information from each of those views and putting it together in a three-dimensional way. So you now have three-dimensional information about the heart, its volume, its shape, its ejection fraction, uh, you know, how, how much blood it takes in, how much blood it pumps out every cycle, every beat. So um, yeah, the magic is that 
we can do that and become and it's equivalent to MRI. So nobody else has been able to do that. Uh, we don't have any competition in the marketplace. Uh, you know, like I said, the only competition is MRI, and, and you just can't have it. put people in MRI every three months, which is the recommended guideline by the American Heart Association for how often you really should see somebody with a significant heart condition. All right, okay. And and so for pediatrics who undergo MRI, um, they're often sedated, and the experience, I'm told, can be a little bit overwhelming for children and their families. Uh, how does the venture point system solve this? Right. I mean, it, you can't put a child, an infant, or a, even a toddler, or even a you know a, a small child into an MRI for an hour and a half, all the way in, totally claustrophobic, without traumatizing them. So you obviously have to sedate them or anesthetize them. So it's been, you know that just adds all this. You have a child with a heart problem, and now you've got to basically anesthetize them and put uh, for an hour or two hours, and that's a dangerous thing to do. So it's not only traumatic for the patient, traumatic for the family, but it's traumatic for the doctor, who has to explain to the doc the the parents the, the risks of doing this. But it's the only way they can get a good look at the heart, so they don't really, they, you know, so they. Selectively do it, but it's a dangerous thing to do. Uh, so that's the trauma is just in the in the risk of it all. Um, and so they don't again they don't do it. So the advantage of the venture point system is that this we're using conventional 2D ultrasound. The child can be sitting in the mother's arms. It's just a little bit of gel on the chest. We can you know depending on what chamber you can usually just do two or three views per chamber to get a pretty accurate result of what you're looking at. So if you're looking at somebody with a congenital heart disease, which is usually the right side of the heart, you can quickly do three or four scan, three or four views. It takes two or three minutes uh, with the with the child in the uh, in the mother's arms or in the father's arms and uh, and then analyze it and in 10 15 minutes you can have an accurate answer of whether of what's exactly going on with this child's heart. Right side, left side doesn't matter. So you know, it's it's absolutely transformational in terms of the difference between uh, you know waiting two months to go to an MRI and spending two hours in the MRI under an anesthetic and being worried about it all to compared to spending five minutes with the child wide awake. Uh, it's uh, completely different and get exactly the same information. Okay, um, and so congratulations on the the Chinese uh, FDA approvals for the your VMS system. What's going to be the size of this market, and what are the planned marketing efforts uh, for this ter- territory? Yes, China has just happened. Uh, it's fantastic. There's 34,000 hospitals in China, 2,500 uh, tier one hospitals, all of which have major cardiac units because, in fact, the uh, hospital admission rate for cardiac uh, indications in, uh, in China is 23%. And it's only about 14, 13, 14 percent in Canada or North America. So it's almost twice as many people who get put in the hospital in China for cardiac reasons. So, so not only is the market huge, uh, but they have a much higher prevalence of heart disease in China. So the market's, you know, uh, you know, something in the order of hundreds of thousands of machines to deal with all the people who have heart problems in China. So the marketing, of, we have a partner, we have a joint venture partner in China. Uh, who has now developed a, a uh, total Chinese distribution uh, network, and they'll be doing a major launch of the product in the 10th of May at the new um, uh, Science uh, City Center in uh, in China, and all the major cardiologists will be there to talk about the need for our equipment in China. So it's uh, it will very quickly start uh, rolling out equipment. We have a factory in China, which is fully operational and GMP certified by the Chinese FDA. And the equipment has been certified in China with uh, to be medical grade, hospital grade equipment. So they're ready to go. Uh, they just, uh, that's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting year in China. Yes. All right. Um, now on on the other side, you recently attended the uh, American College of uh, Cardiology conference. It's uh, the global marketplace for cardiovascular innovation. Uh, you know, was this a, a success? Yeah, the ACC is uh, twenty thousand cardiologists. Uh, you know, so uh, a lot of interventionalists as well as echocardiographers and and other kinds of cardiologists. So they, again, it's a good opportunity for us. We had live scanning in the booth, so we had a. 
uh, person there that doctors could take the equipment and scan and then do the reconstruction. So the booth was very busy with people coming and trying out the equipment. And we're now booking uh, on-site demonstrations at major uh, centers in the United States as a consequence of that um, event, event uh, this weekend. So that's been just great. I mean, it's... Uh, it's what we're trying to do. So we have, you know, the next conference will be the American Society for Echocardiography in June in uh, Portland, and that will be again another seven to eight thousand uh, people who are strictly focused on echocardiography. So that that's a that's a major event of the year for us. Okay, and can you talk about the opportunities? for investors as you move forward? Yes, well, when I speak to investors about our company, uh, we're a publicly traded company both in on the TSX Venture as well as on the OTCQB exchange, so you can buy and sell the shares every day. Uh, you know, we are a $10 million market cap company. If I was a pharmaceutical company with a certified approved product equivalent uh, to something which is already out there, I would have a market cap of 10 times that amount. So there's sort of a combination of the of, a, of a, being a medical device company, but my market is equally as big as you know, it's a multi-billion dollar opportunity that we have uh, to sell the equipment and move into a, a pay-per-use SaaS type model where we would have uh, every time the equipment, where we would actually be doing the reconstructions for the doctors and giving them back the answers and so and charging them for that service. So um, it's, uh, it's a, you know, what people have to understand is it's a fairly changing medical practice is difficult, but we've already got the scientific publication saying it works. We already got that regular approval and now we're into uh, you know, a marketing campaign and awareness campaign to bring this into the market. So we're, we're you know, we've already sold equipment to MD Anderson, number one cancer hospital in the world, because that turns out that every cancer treatment is cardiotoxic. And so while well, you, you put the trans- cancer into remission, you end up, and 30% of the patients end up giving them heart, heart problems. So they're more likely to die from a heart problem after you've had cancer therapy than you are from the cancer re- reoccurring. So we have MP Anderson bought one. You know, we've put one into um, University of Chicago, which uh, Dr. Roberto Lang's office uh, lab, not lab, uh, clinic. Um, he's the number one echocardiographer in the United States. So we, we have the number one people picking up the equipment, and that will then trickle down, and other people will be picking it up in, in, over the over this year. And so we'll have a number of key sites. Uh, promoting it, and we have we have a couple of abstracts that have been submitted to the American Society meetings in June. So uh, again, that's just a case of getting the message out that you know, you can get this information quickly, easily, and, and cost effectively. Mm. So where would you see that immediate growth? Is is that uh, along any um, geographical lines uh, now that you have opened up trade in in China? Uh, I would see. I would think that Chinese markets are going to open very quickly because just the way it's structured and because our JV partner is very well connected there. Uh, we were continue to in Europe and North America to do the direct marketing and sign up uh, distributors. So we now are interviewing distributors. We had an initiative in the Middle East, which we, we put on hold so we could focus on Europe and North America. We are looking at some other distribution partners in those jurisdictions. Um, so, you know, we are open to looking at partners anywhere to bring this thing. Everybody in the world, every cardiologist in the world has a 2D ultrasound machine, even the ones in in, uh, in third world countries, uh, because that's what you need to look at a heart. And so everybody has the core technology, 2D ultrasound, and we can give them the analytical techniques to take that same information and actually analyze it and and get answers in, uh, regardless. And so every you know, heart disease is still the number one problem worldwide. And so we look forward to growing in all over the world. Okay. Um, and so before we finish up for today, is there anything else that, that you'd like to add? Uh, I always like to end with our why. I mean, why are we here? We're here because we don't. there's no need for children or adults to be traumatized by going to an MRI or have to wait two months to get an MRI, or only get, be able to have one MRI every two years uh, to get information about their heart. So, you know, we're here to change, allow patients and doctors to, allow doctors to see their patients every three months, quickly analyze their hearts and decide whether the therapy is appropriate, whether it needs changing, or what is actually going on with the heart. So that's why we're here.
Dr. George Adams, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. This has been a production of BoardroomBroadcasts.com, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited, all rights reserved. You can stay up to date with all our content by visiting www.BoardroomBroadcasts.com and clicking on subscribe.